Good day, welcome to my talk on maps for family historians, where we step back in time to find out how they can be used in family history, or also how they relate to local history and social, social history. I love maps and I'll be talking about where, what kind of maps there are, where to find them, and then taking a closer look at some of the main groups of maps that you can use in your research. These are one of the most fantastic sources and sometimes one of the most unused sources in family history. And I think that's sometimes because people don't see them as a genealogical resource because they don't necessarily take you from one generation to the next. But what they do is, as my subtitle tells you, they help us step back in time. They help us see the environment in which our ancestors live, learn to understand why they lived where they did, the sort of buildings uh, they made their homes in, where they worked, why they might have moved around, what directions they went in, why they might have gone in one direction for work rather than another. And they can also add details about relationships, but more Perhaps more importantly, they tell us about the social context of their lives, who they worked for, who the landowners were, who the business owners were, and how the landscape in which they lived, where people made their homes, has changed over time and why. So starting off, I'll just give you a very quick summary of the different types of maps that are available. And the image on this first slide is of a county map from Suffolk inside 1845 Trade Directory, White's Trade Directory. And like many maps, this has actually been adapted by the publishers. It includes a, a drawing of the Church of Hadley in Suffolk. And, it, and the map has numbers on it, if you were to look at it closely, identifying the different hundreds which were administrative units. And at the bottom left-hand side of the map is a key which gives you, tells you which of each of those hundreds were. Those are very important when you're looking for things like civil registration records, working out what areas people lived in, where courts were held and so on. And it's a great example of how maps have been adapted for different uses over time. And I've got up here a little summary. And we go from... Um, not almost alphabetical. We go from the earliest maps, the county maps, through to modern town and city maps showing massive developments. You can have maps that relate to particular uses such as drainage and sewerage, uh, enclosure and estate maps. All of these I'll be coming back to in a bit more detail. I've also mentioned on this summary the Inland Revenue Valuation Office survey map insurance, manorial, the National Farm Survey. And as you'll notice from this list, many of these are maps that are associated with other documentation. And they can also lead you to many other sources that tell you about your ancestors and their lives. Perhaps the biggest and most important group in there are the Ordnance Survey maps. And again, I'll be taking a closer look at these. There are also parish maps. There are even poverty maps, which draw up, such as Booth's poverty maps, maps of public works, road maps, canal and railway routes, social, other social survey maps, the Tithe and town plans. And that's just to give you an idea of the wide range of maps that exist from at least the 1500s onwards for UK. And I'm primarily focusing on England and Wales, but these will... Many of these maps also exist for Scotland too. So just before we take a closer look, I'm just going to go over where you might find fine maps in particular. The good news is that there's an increasing amount becoming available online, but it's still only a fraction of what you will find in various archives. And as with many family history sources, perhaps your best place to start is your county record office, where you will find maps, if you're lucky, going back even into the 1300s. You'll also find maps in reference libraries, heritage centres and in some local museums, many of which are in their backroom storage areas and you might have to inquire to find out exactly what they've got, depending on how good their catalogues are. <coughs> 
the biggest collection of maps are those held at the British Library. Um, and I'm going to be featuring one or two of these in my talk. And they are increasingly adding these to their online digitised collection, which you can access and look at for free. Uh, and it's always worth uh, going back to that collection periodically to see if there's anything new. The National Archives does have some maps, um, but it doesn't have as many as you will find in a county record office or many different types of maps. But you will primarily find maps to do with um, national that uh, relate to national collections, such as enclosure and tithe. And again, I'll come back to those. <clears throat> the National Library of Wales, of course, has is the uh, primary archives for Wales. And again, they've got a growing digitisation programme for all sorts of records. Uh, when it comes to the commercial websites, the three main family history websites, the one that is the best and has the largest collection is the genealogist. And I will be featuring several of these throughout my talk, but they have this fantastic map explorer tool where you can overlay ordnance surveys from across different time periods, along with tithe maps and maps from the Inland Revenue Survey collection, which they're adding to all the time. Uh, so it's in terms of the commercial websites, that's my go to for maps. Uh, you'll also find uh, uh, some maps on the British History Online website. English Heritage also have some collections online and as well as in their archives. And the biggest collection perhaps of Ordnance Survey uh, for across the whole of the UK, England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland is the National uh, Northern Ireland now, uh, is the National Library of Scotland. And you can access, access those for free. They also have some other maps, um, which is being added to quite a bit as well. A lot of those just relate to Scotland, such as the Scottish insurance maps from the Goad collection, but uh, their Ordnance Survey maps cover more than just Scotland, and it's a fantastic free resource. The Bodleian Library in Oxfordshire, or in Oxford itself, it doesn't just cover Oxfordshire. Again, they have a wide collection of other, other maps uh, from, and from other areas as well, although it obviously is primarily for that area, but it's not just confined to that. Um, then to find out more about maps and map making history, you can look at the Ordnance Survey's uh, own website where they've got quite a nice little outline of their history of the Ordnance Survey. The London Topographical Society also has a great amount of uh, material and information and some copies and examples of maps. There is a British Cartological Society and then the Survey of London has quite a lot of maps relating to the London area. Um, and then finally, there's the Vis Vis Vision of Britain website, which, uh, in, again, includes quite a lot of data about different areas and includes some maps. And if you're looking for publications, printed publications and sources held, uh, collected or held by fam local family history societies, then check out the Family History Federation. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. To watch the extended, uninterrupted version, go to familyhistory.tv, link in the description. You will also find a host of talks from other experts on a variety of subjects. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when these videos become available.